justice! No justice! Get out of the car with your hands up! I call for the police to stop killing. Come towards us! Do not go towards that door. How many times will a black person have to choke out the words, I can't breathe? Demands for racial justice as the deaths of unarmed black and Hispanic Americans by police reach the consciousness and the conscience of a nation. Say Their Names, a chant made popular so that we won't forget George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Michael Brown, and others. But there are other names not so well known, nonviolent people whose deaths at the hands of police deserve to have their stories told too. I'm Bob Garcia Buckaloo. I've been a journalist for four decades, many of those years reporting on our justice system in Texas. This podcast series tells the story of unarmed people who were of no apparent threat, whose deaths occurred after a confrontation with police. For them and for their families, justice has been slow to come, or not at all. We call this podcast Still No Justice, a collaboration between KVUE-TV in Austin and Vault Studios. There's a house that's been painted a light gray. It's a well-kept older home that sits on a manicured lawn near the corner of East Allen Avenue and Mississippi Street. That's in South Fort Worth, Texas. It's in a mostly black neighborhood where it's said that people look out for one another, where neighbors know each other by name and stay in touch. And it was one of those neighbors who was worried about the person who lived in the gray house. It's 2.30 in the morning, it's October 12th, 2019, and James Smith, the worried neighbor, was concerned that the front door of the gray house was wide open and the lights were on, and it had been that way for hours. That's unusual because Smith knew the owner of the gray house, something she wouldn't do. An older woman named Yolanda Carr, who had a heart condition and had recently been in and out of the hospital. He was afraid that something might have happened to her. After all, the front door was wide open and it was late at night. So James Smith dialed a non-emergency number for the city of Fort Worth to request a wellness check from police to see if Yolanda Carr was okay. Fort Worth Police Operator M873, what's the address? Uh, I'm calling about my neighbor. The front doors have been open since 10 o'clock and I haven't seen anybody Moving around, it's not normal for them to have both, both of the doors open this time of night. Okay. You know if anyone is inside? No, I'm not sure. Both of the calls are there. At the time he made the call, James Smith did not know that Yolanda Carr, the woman with the heart condition, was in a hospital that night and not at home. Her daughter and grandson were in the gray house that night. They were up late playing video games. Somehow the front door was either blown open by the wind, or maybe the young grandson had forgotten to close it. But Smith didn't know that when he made the phone call. Are they usually home at this time? Uh, They're usually home, but they never had both of the front doors open. The lights on, like I can see straight through the house. Well, I have an officer come by. They're already being dispatched now, okay? Okay, appreciate it. I mean, it's just not normal for them to have both the doors open this late that long. Fast forward about seven hours later in another Fort Worth neighborhood. That's where Eric Alvarez, a TV reporter for station WFAA, was sitting at home. I'll never forget. uh, I was just kind of sitting at home with my with my two daughters and I got a phone call and a a handful of text messages that said it was urgent and I needed to come in as soon as possible. Uh, And I could tell by the tone of our communications that something major had happened. So. I want to say it was maybe about 10 in the morning, well before my shift was supposed to start. I, I had it received an address and, uh, you know, a li- very limited information. And I w- immediately went out to the scene. And what I saw uh, that morning, um, that Saturday is something that, you know, has, has stuck with me over the last few months. Uh, just a lot of people from the neighborhood were out. There was a lot of confusion. A lot of church leaders and neighbors uh, were out trying to figure out exactly what had happened. So I could tell that the neighborhood was extremely, you know, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of people were upset, they were distraught, they were demanding answers. 
Something terrible had happened at the Gray House on East Allen Avenue. Police were everywhere. There was yellow crime scene tape, neighbors in tears. And eventually the news got out. Yolanda Carr, the woman with a heart condition, her daughter, a Tatiana Jefferson, the one who had been up late playing video games with her nephew at the house where the front door was open. A Tatiana Jefferson had been shot to death. The nephew, who was eight years old, was okay. But who had killed a Tatiana, and why? A Tatiana, who was 28 years old when she died, worked as a pharmaceutical sales rep. She had graduated from Xavier University with a science degree. She would returned home after college to help her family with medical issues and was planning to attend medical school. Respected by her neighbors, loved by many who knew her, a Tatiana played an important role for her family. Eric Alvarez. She was an aunt, she was a student, uh, she was a caretaker uh, for her relatives. And so for something like that to happen uh, to someone who was so, uh, you know, respected there uh, and in this neighborhood. It was one of those where, you know, they, they tend to know uh, everybody, not in all neighborhoods are like that, but people knew who a Tatiana Jefferson was. But it wouldn't take long for a Tatiana's family and her neighbors to learn who had killed her. I'd first like to extend my sincerest sympathies to the family of a Tatiana Jefferson. That's Fort Worth Police Chief Ed Krause at a news conference. Her father called this shooting senseless and I certainly have not been able to make sense of why she had to lose her life. On behalf of the men and women of the Fort Worth Police Department, I'm so sorry for what occurred. You, Tatiana's family and friends, have my apologies, my condolences, and my prayers. A police chief who was apologizing for the deadly action that was taken by one of his own officers. Aaron Dean, ID 4598, was the officer who responded to the call and fired the shot that killed a Tatiana. The police call that Aaron Dean and another officer had been sent to check on the welfare of the woman who lived in the Gray House, just a simple welfare check at the request of neighbor James Smith. The body cam, worn by Officer Aaron Dean, tells the tragic story of how a Tatiana Jefferson died. It, 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 was, it was just a, a shocking and painful thing to watch. Kevin Reese from TV station WFAA was among the first reporters to watch the body cam video. In the background, you'll hear the sound from the actual body cam video. The officers arrived. They did not park directly in front of the house. They parked uh, about a half block away and approached the house. And as we see in the body cam video of Fort Worth police officer Aaron Dean, he looks at the front door. He looks at the side door, and then he works his way uh, under a carport around to the backyard. He opens the back uh, gate into that backyard and looks around. It's completely dark back there. The only light is from his flashlight. And then you see him turn and look at a back bedroom window. And that's when I froze the video because I froze the video and I looked and there's the face of a Tatiana Jefferson. A Tatiana Jefferson, as her nephew later tells us, heard noises. Mm -hmm. She heard someone patrolling around in her backyard, didn't know what was going on. The police had not announced themselves. And so she went to her back bedroom window to look into the backyard to see what was in her backyard and where this noise was coming from. Uh, in a split second, in that body cam video, the officer yells, Put your hands up! Show me your hands! Up! And then a millisecond later, fires a single shot into the window and hits and kills a Tatiana Jefferson standing in her own bedroom, inside her own house. Since police never identified themselves, it's likely that a Tatiana believed that there was an intruder in the backyard. And according to an arrest warrant affidavit for the officer who fired the fatal shot, a Tatiana's young nephew said that his aunt drew a gun from her purse when she heard noises outside the house, the noises made by the police. But there is no indication in Dean's body cam video that he saw a Tatiana holding a gun. 
In fact, when investigators interviewed the other officer who responded to the welfare call with Dean, she told investigators Dean was standing between her and the house at the time of the shooting, and that she, the other officer, could only see a Tatiana Jefferson's face through the window when Dean suddenly opened fire. That's according to the affidavit. And anyway, Fort Worth Mayor Betsy Price said it didn't matter if a Tatiana had a gun for protection. The gun is irrelevant. She was in her own home caring for an eight-year-old nephew. Atiana was a victim. She was taken from her family in circumstances that are truly unthinkable. Police Chief Ed Krause. It makes sense that she would have a gun if she felt that she was being threatened or there was someone in the backyard. I'm deeply sorry for what occurred. I've received so many contacts from our officers who want to express how sorry they are as well and how this is not indicative of the work they do every day. Human life is a precious thing and should not have been taken from Ms. Jefferson. This incident has eroded the trust that we have built with our community and we must now work even harder to ensure that trust is restored. Trust in the police department had been strained that year. For Fort Worth's black community, the death of a Tatiana was another in a series of fatal police shootings in 2019. By the time we stop being angry, there is another body that the police have put in the ground. Hundreds marched for justice for a Tatiana in Fort Worth and many more across the U.S. when her story briefly made national headlines. The story of a white cop who had killed a black woman who had been minding her own business inside her mother's home. There was immediate reaction from Pastor Rodney McIntosh of Christ the Risen King Church. It's sad enough that our young men are being killed. But when our women are not safe, as men in our community, we are called to stand up and protect the women in our community. Right. And when our women are not safe, then it's going to get to a point that we can no longer be passive. At some point, we have to fight aggression with aggression. As pastors and Christians, yes, right we're right called right to love. Right we're right called right. to forgive. But we're not, we're not called to be fools. Right. And it's time out for you to continue to kill the people in our neighborhood and That's expect it. us to be passive. So again, I'm with Bishop Kirkland. When I first got involved with this, this is what I said. What bothers me with us as a community is two or three weeks, we'll be upset, we'll be angry, and then we'll go on with life. But what we're finding out, if we stop for two or three weeks, two or three weeks later, somebody else may be killed. Mm -hmm. So we got to stand up as a community and let them know that we're sick and tired of our young ladies being killed. We're sick and tired of our sons being killed. Mm -hmm. And the thing with this, you can't say she had a gun in her hand. It don't matter if she did, because in all actuality, if if the Castle Doctrine could have stood in the Amber Gaga trial, then it could have stood in this one. She had the right to protect herself if she's in her own house. And if you are outside of my house, walking outside of my window, and there is a gun, in my house. As a person that has property and is a rightful property owner, I have a right to protect myself. That's so right. I want to find out how you're going to twist this one, right. how you're going to turn this one right. to try and make it seem as though it's justified for you killing this lady in our house. Right. And the next thing I would like to say, the Chief Krause, Mayor Betsy Price, right. and all the city yeah. officials, we're not asking for a suspension. No. And I'm, speak, I'm saying as a community, we're not asking for a suspension. Right. Right. We're asking for termination. Right. We're not going to allow you to tell us he got suspended for 30 days and we, we applaud you and say, job well no. done. No. This person, whoever it is male or female does not need to be on the streets because if that was me and I killed somebody that was in their own house me knowing from dealing with the system y'all gonna put me in prison and put me in there for a long time right. so we cannot allow this man to do this keep their job and then not labor them as what they are and that is a murderer that's right a Tatiana Jefferson's family asked that her funeral be private not recorded not broadcast on TV reporter Kevin Reese covered the funeral story for the evening news a Tatiana was carried to a private burial in a glass-sided hearse. One more chance for everyone to see the impact of that night and that encounter in Fort Worth. Now her family braces for the long journey to justice that they pray will come next. Aaron Dean had been with the Fort Worth Police Force a little over a year when he shot a Tatiana. He resigned from the force shortly after her death. Authorities acted quickly and charged him with a crime. The police chief told reporters. At approximately 6 p.m. yesterday, Aaron Dean was arrested for the murder of Miss Jefferson. We obtained an arrest warrant after enough evidence and facts were analyzed and verified. A team of officers quickly effected his arrest at the office of his, of his attorney. 
He was booked into the Tarrant County Jail where his bond was set by the presiding magistrate. He has since posted bond. Dean had been released from jail after posting a $200,000 bond. His trial has been delayed because of the COVID-19 outbreak. According to the attorney for the family, Lee Merritt, the story of Atatiana's death speaks to a larger issue. We allow officers to uh, use deadly force anytime that they perceive a threat, even if, even if we cannot, even if they cannot articulate where the threat emanated from. Uh, we, we allow law enforcement officers kind of, to kind of chase the ghost in their heads. And as a result, uh, we, we have produced the deadliest police culture in the industrialized world. Um, and so it's a training issue. I believe it's also a mission issue. We know that the use of force is disproportionate in black communities. Um, just by the, by the data alone, if you're black, you're two times more like 2.5 times more likely to be killed or brutalized by law enforcement if you're suffering from a mental health crisis and cannot quickly comply to law enforcement officers, you're 16 times more likely than the average citizen. Uh, and so there, there, there is a training issue, but there's just a, a unique cultural issue, I think, in policing that allows law enforcement officers to use deadly force uh, in situations that, that don't warrant such force. Uh, there, there is, uh, to be more clear, there is no specific policy in our laws, similar to some of our neighboring countries, that that puts a particular emphasis on the preservation of human life. Since Tatiana's death, both of her parents have died from heart conditions. Her nephew, who was with her the night of the shooting, his name is Zion, continues to get counseling. Reporter Eric Alvarez has kept up with young Zion. Zion has been very uh, vocal and active, despite you know being such a such a young child. Uh, calling for reform within the Fort Worth Police Department. And one of the things that he is trying to accomplish is he is trying to fund a video game community center in Fort Worth where children can come and play video games in a safe environment and also learn, uh, get some STEM education, learn things about coding and things like that. So Zion has taken this tragedy and turned it into a way of trying to change things. The community here was greatly impacted by the death of a Tatiana Jefferson. It was greatly impacted and has been and continues to be greatly impacted by the topic, the discussion uh, that is continuing now for over a year about race relations, about policing, here there was an incredible turnout uh, this this was before uh the pandemic so late last year in october november city council meetings full of people and the public comments the likes of which i hadn't seen here in the city of fort worth at least during my time as, as a journalist here people in pain people taking to the streets demanding change same as we're seeing all over the country. Uh, it's, it's been a very difficult time for this community. And I, you know, I just, I hope that, that there's a way for all of us together to, to come out of it. And I, I will gladly be there to continue reporting uh, until we get, get to that point. For James Smith, the man who made the phone call to get someone to check on the welfare of the person who lived in that gray house on East Allen Avenue that ultimately led to the death of a Tatiana, James Smith says he wishes he had never made that call. I made the call because I thought that they were going to do what I called them to do, check on my neighbor. And they didn't do that. I'm devastated. This is the most tragic thing in my life most tragic thing in my life. And there's no, there's no erasing that. It can't be erased. I've prayed and I've cried. People say, well, James, it's not your fault. You're not your fault. <laughs> but I made a call. Our podcast series is called Still No Justice, 
and is produced by KVUE-TV in Austin, Texas, in collaboration with Vault Studios. Our thanks to the news staff of Dallas TV station WFAA for their assistance in making this report possible. The executive producer of Still No Justice is Sarah Bryant. I'm Bob Garcia-Buckaloo.